A few weeks ago, we dived into one of the all-time classic Warhammer armies that Games Workshop has inexplicably abandoned to the depths of the warp, and today we have another ripper on the menu and possibly my favourite Games Workshop models of all time. There have been a whole host of armies that Games Workshop has abandoned. Some of them have just been small mentions in the lore, and others have had entire ranges of models that have been discarded, but there is one army that stands above them all. They have been hit hard across the board with range after range of gorgeous sculpts left behind. Just like my beloved renegades and heretics from our last episode, they are one of the largest and most important factions in all of Warhammer 40k and the Horus Heresy. Now here at Zorbazorb, we are deep into the Horus Heresy. We've launched an absolute mental narrative campaign, the Mark of Kelth, comprising over 50,000 points of models, 25 videos, including nine utterly insane cinematic battle reports that are the most immersive Warhammer content you've seen on YouTube. And as I began planning this monstrosity, I became overjoyed at the prospect of returning to one of my first loves all the way back from the fourth edition of Warhammer 40k and giving them the love and the spotlight they deserve. Today, I am so absolutely over the moon to finally present to you the Imperial Guard. No, not those Imperial Guard, these Imperial Guard, the mighty Vostrian Firstborn, an absolutely gorgeous flavor of guardsmen that once upon a time had one of the most detailed and lavish all-metal model ranges of any Games Workshop 40k faction. This is actually a common theme for the Imperial Guard. They have a whole host of old metal regiments now completely out of production, but the popularity and the size of the Vostrian range really makes it sting all the more. Now, whenever I try to build up armies for the channel, I try to find multiple uses for them. So when we started prepping for the Horus Heresy campaign, I knew it was the ultimate chance to dive back into my Vostrians and run them as Imperial Army for the defense of Kelf, and at the same time, slowly get more and more painted for an even more special campaign for Vostrian lovers I'll talk about in a sec. Now these guys are actually quite an interesting element within the Heresy framework. In terms of official model support, there are some really sexy Solar Auxilia units, which represent a specific type of Imperial Army Regiment that was trained within the Sol system for key military powers like Saturn, Luna, and of course Terra itself. But although these units were highly prevalent in Crusade forces, the bog standard Imperial Army Trooper also has their own set of rules, a mix of profiles designed to let you bash them into shape to suit the law of whichever unit you're representing on the field. We've already seen the cults and militia profiles put to use for my absolutely hectic word bearer cultist force and today we'll be using the same set of data sheets to run a unit at the complete opposite end of the soldier spectrum, the Kelth Imperial Army Regiments viciously loyal to the Ultramarines, Gilliman, Kelth, and Mars. Now as it stands, we are using the profiles from 1st edition, but it has been confirmed by Games Workshop that we are getting a whole new set of rules in one of the upcoming army books, and we don't expect a great deal to change for them, but in any case, I've kitted out my squads with a nice variety of gear so that we can retool them when the new profiles come out. Now the first choice to make for Imperial Army is to decide what they actually look like. They don't actually have official models beyond kit bashing the Cadian Guardsmen from 40k, and that gives us a lot of scope and gives me the absolute perfect opportunity to finish two armies at once as at long last we here at Zorbazorb finally return some two years later to my gorgeous all-metal Vostrian army. Now, in case you guys aren't familiar with my fourth edition 40k love affair, I was taken into the world of the Vostrians or the Vostroians, depending on your flavor, in the amazing White Dwarf Australia campaign, the Tandaris Outbreak, which we will be playing through here on the channel when 10th edition 40k launches. But for now, my beloved Vostrians will be joining the Imperial Army in defense of Kelth. Now, these models are actually the perfect choice for many reasons. They they are incredibly well armored and equipped, which suits the very well resourced Imperial regiments of Ultramar. The scheme that I have already begun painting the army with is also heavily dominated by reds and golds, and as the majority of the Imperial army units on Kalth were actually sworn to the Viridia Forge complex, that ties in with Mars beautifully and makes for a lovely little lore element to go into the army, and above all, they are possibly one of the most gorgeous miniature rangers Games Workshop has ever produced. That's three big ticks for me, it's time to 
make the Imperial Army. But to make these guys feel a little bit more special than your bog standard Vostrians, I've got some extra ideas for them, starting off with the Command Squad. Now I'm sure you guys have heard of Manscaped and their amazing performance package bundle, including their Lawnmower 4.0 waterproof body hair trimmer, but this is actually the fourth time that Manscaped have sponsored Zorpa Zorp, and this time they have sent me my absolute favorite product. Their new collection of anti-chafing, high-performance boxer briefs. I never thought I could be so excited about underwear, but they are so comfortable. I've literally thrown out all of my other underwear and asked Manscaped to send me a whole bunch more of them. There are now more than six color combinations to choose from, suited for business or pleasure, and you can pick up single units or bundle up and save with their new three-pack options over at manscaped.com. They look super sleek, but the reason these bad boys are so comfy is the new dual pouch design, a dedicated space that cradles you with a perforated performance fabric for extra breathability. Go to manscaped.com today to get 20% off plus free international shipping when you use the code ZORP at checkout. Your balls will thank you. Now this particular force of Imperial Army, the Neride Regulator's 10th that has joined Archmagos Mir Edvatorin and joined Captain Remus Ventanus is led by Colonel Sparzi, a grisly war veteran who has seized his chance to unleash retribution in the name of the Emperor and cobbled together the remnant of his army regiment to assist the Loyalist resistance. For him, I have the incredible Vostrian general model that was sent to me by a longtime fan of the channel, Joe from Legionnaire Minis, who is basically the king of Vostrians on Instagram. Now, Sparzi is perfect as is, we just have to assemble his little staff, but his command squad needs some flair. So I decided to make a big company standard and steal a banner from one of the new Ultramarine Primaris models, and I decided that the perfect standard bearer model would be one of the Vostrian snipers that I had spare, as without arms, once you get rid of that rifle, he's got a big swirling cape and cloak, which already has a lot of presence on the table. I snipped off all of the power armored gauntlets on the banner and used a left arm from the Forge World Renegades and Heretics upgrade sprue, which is now long out of production, and drilled a hole through the hand to help the banner and attach that to the guardsman's right shoulder. With the top of the banner pinned and in place using super glue, because this model is now made of metal, resin, and plastic, which I think might be a first for me, I then grabbed the leftover banner pole and attached it underneath. I used a las pistol again from that Renegade upgrade frame and BAM! That is one sexy Kalf Imperial Army Bannerman. The rest of the squad were a standard loadout except for a shotgun toting sergeant I converted years ago for the Tandaris campaign. Uh, we'll see him in a little bit detail in like two years or something. The Imperial Army, however, needed to ride into battle in style and have some seriously armored support. But instead of going for the standard Lehman Russ option, I opted for two Malkadors. They've got a bit more of a regal estate and kind of vibes with uh, Ultramar and sort of the heresy in general. Looks a bit more like the Solar Auxilia vehicles. They're going to escort my command squad in a Chimera, which absolutely was in the heresy in spite of a few attempted retcons over the years. I'd already built the Chimera years ago and the two Malkadors I picked up second hand. One was in great nick with magnetized weapon barrels, but the other one was in a bit rougher shape. The paint coat was thin, so I didn't bother stripping it to beat up old tank anyway, but I did need to scratch off the decal as much as I could, and then I pried open the turret housing and shaved away all the old super glue and busted out the turret mechanism, as I wanted my turret to be able to move and pan for some cinematic shots in the battle report. With the turret salvaged and cleaned of glue, I realized the roof of the housing was a little warped, so I tried to straighten it out with some hot water dipping and then flexing with my fingers and then set about magnetizing the turret using some magnets from themagnetbaron.com. Oh. That is a strong magnet. I then grabbed one of the Laz Cannon sponsors from the heavy weapons team and committed the ultimate sacrilege, hacking apart an out of production, quite rare metal model by slicing off his legs with my razor saw so he could poke out of the top hatch like a little tank commander. And there we have the command cadre of the Imperial Army. Now these three units are very special and they needed some special treatment. And after telling Joe from Legionnaire Minis about the project, remember him from earlier, the god of Vostrians on Instagram, well, Joe just couldn't help himself, and he was desperate to get on board. So I sent him over the three tanks and the command squad for him to work his magic and set about painting the troops. If you guys want to see some more photos of these gorgeous Vostrians by Joe from Legionnaire Minis, go and check out his Instagram. I've got it linked right on the top of the description and the pinned comment. It's, oh, they just look incredible. Please go and check out his Insta. If you're enjoying the army coming together so far, like the video, subscribe, and comment down below your favorite army or faction that game 
Games Workshop has left behind to give yourself a chance to win an epic reinforcement bundle for your heresy forces, including the new Sakaran Battle Tank and Leviathan Siege Dreadnought, the perfect follow-up if you just grabbed the Age of Darkness box set or you're expanding an existing Legion. Remember, if you are gearing up for the heresy, Middle Earth, or anything in between, use my affiliate links down in the description to grab the best prices in the UK, Australia, EU, US, Canada, and New Zealand. You'll get an incredible discount and send some dollary dues back to support the channel and power on the march to terror. Now, long-time viewers of the channel will remember my first attempt at painting my mighty Vostrian army basically ended in abject failure. But today's task is a little more hopeful. I'm just going to aim to finish off the squads that are half-started to support the Armoured Command Corps being handled by Joe. But let's whiz back to the start of this journey to get you all up to speed. The first layer going down is the largest and the easiest to reach, the Red Cloth. I'm striking the perfect balance of speed and quality of finish with this pass by putting down a base coat with Vallejo Scarlet Red and then wet blending mid-tones and highlights straight onto the upper folds of the cloth with gory and bloody red. This creates a really nice gradient across the fabric and I could do it all in one pass. As soon as I pick up one model and whack it back down on the table, it is finished. The Vostrian armor is very intricate with a combination of gold plate mail and silver chain covered by a network of strapping, pouches and accessories. We're going to hit the silver first because it's sort of the foundation of the whole model and it's much easier to slap on faster messily and have much more control for the layers that go down over the top. The ornate stylings of the Vostrians continue from their armor to their weapons, which feature a stunning combination of wooden paneling and gold trim or inlay. So I moved on to that as the next big metallic layer, and I realized I'd save some time if I actually threw down the wood tones first uh, and then cleaned up all the gold pass second. So I threw down a base coat of charred brown and then went back to some simple wet blending just like the red to save a bit of time and get some subtle highlights, throwing down some dark flesh tone and then a few thin lines to build up a sort of foundation of wood green. This will be more emphasized later on in a, in a later detail pass if I ever get time to do it. Uh, then it's onto the gold. This is an absolute monster of a layer. There is gold everywhere on these models. Gold plate mail, gold trim, gold fins, gold detailing, aquila, insignia. There's fur hat gold, there's red cloth gold, there's canteen gold, there's boot gold. It's just gold. It's just all gold. For now I'm hitting the broader areas. I'll touch up the finer details later once we've got all the boot colors down and get the rest of the base coat through. Next, it's time to hit those boots and pouches. These are a nice neutral dark grey, so to give the scheme a little bit more contrast and, and make the other elements really pop. I wanted these to just melt into the background. As such, I've mixed up a blend of Abaddon Black and Vallejo Stonewall Grey in my wet palette, and I'm going to start off with an even base coat of about 80% black, and then as I move through the model, I'll just keep using that wet blending again, coming off the palette, moving up to about 55% black to give some edge highlights to create some subtle definition across these dark grey objects. And now the final element is washing. Nuln Oil, my sweet prince, how I have longed for thy embrace, and dear Agrax, grant thee thy gifts of talent and depth and subtle contrast. We have finally made it to washes, and two of Games Workshop's heavyweights are coming in swinging. First up, it is the Pot of Liquid Shadows Nuln Oil. That goes down all over the silver and the greys. The lead belcher is now suddenly rich with recessed detail and sinking even deeper into the background of the scheme, which helps everything pop. That's just where we want it. And the greys have an even more subtle depth of tone once that shadow gets really pushed deeper. Agrax Earthshade is then going over all the golds and brown, everything we want warm. Not only does this make the incredible detail of the gold readable to the eye, it helps with all those recess elements. It filters the gold on the wood tones with a kind of sexy sepia goodness and blends them together into this nice cohesive layer block. All right, the base coats and the shades are done. We can now fast forward back to present day and see the task before us. We've got to start, but there's a fair bit to do. Up first is possibly my favorite part of this paint job, the metallic highlights. I was so bummed that I never got to this last time I tried to paint these guys, and it's my own little creation as well. A nice 50-50 mix of Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armor, and this is edge highlighting all of that gold. The guns, the armor, the pads, all those little detail, it just makes it absolutely sing. Then it's onto the Purity Seals. These guys got a base coat of Skeleton Horde Contrast. That gets those nice brown tones down 
down. Then there's a few highlights blending in with khaki and bone white. Again, wet blending, love it. I uh, missed a few reds on the wax seals as well, so they got a few touch-ups, and then our purity seals are good to go. All of the hats just got a neat coat with basilicanum gray. This is the perfect sort of texture to apply a neat contrast paint. Super, super easy, grabs all the detail, looks fantastic with one pass. The skin was then base toned in Kislev flesh and then given a wash in Reichlin flesh shade. And then these boys are ready to dry and get a varnish. Now I hit these guys with a big pass of matte varnish and I have to tell you I regretted it. It absolutely killed all the highlight work I'd done on my beautiful gold. I really should have used a satin varnish and sort of worn the kind of shinier texture on the fabrics, but I didn't have time to correct this, so I just leapt straight into basing. But I definitely think in the future, I'll touch up the gold highlights in like 10 years or something when I finally get around to it, because it does make me a bit sad. The basing recipe, however, is my classic heresy mixture, blending grimdark city rubble and plain city rubble to get the perfect gray. You can sort of combine different ratios of this depending on how dark you want your gray to work. I think I did three to one uh, light to dark city rubble. I first whacked down a coat of fast drying basing glue on the base after a, a bit of a base room coat with storm vermin fur. I then let that dry for 10 minutes until the edges go glossy and tacky and then just dunk the mini straight down into the blended mix. That all grabs instantly but to lock it down super tight for really fierce gaming and throwing around on the campaign board I applied some isopropyl alcohol as a capillary action and then a matte scenic sealant as always, using a pipette to get beautiful concentrated sealant straight into the mixture. And then boom, these boys are ready to take the field behind their commander. And as you can see here in the Mark of Kelth campaign, the command squad and the three vehicles that Joe painted up to lead them are absolutely mental. So damn exquisite. I might just pay him to finish the rest of my dudes too once I move over to New Zealand and can cruise up to his place for a hobby day. He has done a killer job. He even painted up a little war pug to be Colonel Sparzi's faithful sidekick, a true companion for a colonel in the Kelf Imperial Army. If you're keen to see these guys in action and haven't seen our insane Horus Heresy narrative campaign, go and check it out. The link is down in the description and the top comment. It is like no other series of battle reports on YouTube and it is sure to knock your socks off. Even if you don't care about Space Marines and you usually hate battle reports, I promise you, you're going to be blown away. I'm so proud of it and I cannot wait to bring you guys the next installment. Stay tuned later for more, more, more heresy hobby madness. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Lucky out. We march for Kalth.